everyone it's Jen here and welcome to my channel so today I'm going to be drawing and painting a horse galloping for you I will explain explain my whole process step by step um, yeah so I hope you enjoy this so here we go so I'm going to draw the head first oh my lids must be getting to the end of the lead it's a bit wobbly in its holder actually I'm going to swap get some more leads oh no whoops they're all good there we go so I'm just going to freehand draw this horse. So he's got from his head to his brow to his nose. So that's his brow and two times that's the length of his head. So his head's about that long. Cool, cool. So I'm going to do this in pencil and I might go in with watercolour. I haven't decided what... Um, Medium going to use, medium I'm going to use, but we'll see how the mop flops. All right, so draw the marking on his face. I can actually get a lot of detail in with the pen, pencil. <clears throat> because I do love drawing horses a lot. I could even make him a monotone one and just do him in black and white and just lots of detail. That could be fun. That could be fun. So I'm going to draw his ears on. Like that. There we go. So we've got part of his face done. Now his head and his neck are the same length because he's sort of on an angle so I just mark that there he's sort of running towards us so his neck's about that long that's quite a strong neck <clears throat> then I'll pop his mane down there and his chest is also the same length as his head so I'll pop that in there like that. Okay, cool. Now, whoop, his back is the length of his neck. So his head's that long. I use my hands to measure roughly. Because um, that way when you're out, out in the bush or out in the wild, out sitting out in the paddock drawing something, I can use my fingers to measure proportions of an animal. And it just helps. You know, you don't need any special tools. You can just use your fingers or your pencil to measure things. And that's what I do. So, and I've done that all my life. And it's a very helpful thing to be able to do. So I'll just do his tail out there. Now, his belly is also the depth of his length of his neck. So I pop that in like that <coughs> and you can see I add little markers um, you, sorry about the coughing I've got asthma really bad today so his legs are one and a half times the length of his barrel so we're gonna go one and a half All right so that's how I get his basic measurements and his foots off the bottom there and he's got that leg going along behind there. I'll draw this one in first. Get this right. Take it in there. Oops, his knee's a little bit further down than I've got it. There we go. All right. Got to change the shape of his belly a little bit. There we go. And because he's sort of a little bit facing away, just a fraction. I'll draw his hoof in. Like that, just the front of his hoof. Come back down the back of his leg. And then that foot disappears off into the grass. So I'm just going to do that to suggest his hoof. 
All right, now this back leg is sort of twisted under because he's galloping. He's got the back of his backside comes down there. Um, and his knee and his hock. So that's his knee and this is his hock. His back knee joint are even. The top of them are even. So I'll just mark that in there. That's how you can get things to look in proportion. It's just to check everything against every other part of the animal. His back leg's a little bit stronger and a bit thicker than his front leg. <clears throat> so um, we can just mark that. In this leg you can't see. You can only see the back of it. Because he's galloping, so you can't see the top. I'll probably pop a little bit of it in. And then... I'm going to get that back leg down on the paper there like that. Right, he looks pretty cool. I'm pretty happy with that. Um, Alright, pretty cool, pretty cool, pretty cool, pretty cool. Okay, and I'm trying to decide, I can get some more of his details in, whether I want to colour him or I want to do him in black and white. I don't know. I could just do him in super fine I could do him in watercolour and just add some pen at the top if I need to. Because he's a pinto, he's a multicoloured horse, so I'm going I might do that. Because so I've got his blaze on the front. He's got a beautiful stocking up this part of his leg. So I'll mark that in. Mark that in. So I'll put a few of his patches in that he's got, because he's a multicoloured horse. He's got a patch coming up here goes all the way around on his rump and around to there so I can mark that in like that I'll put a little patch on his back only the backs of his legs are white this one's got a brown bit at the top and I will give him this part of his head is darker Okay, I'm having a quick look at the screen now to see how he looks. I'm pretty happy with that. Right. Now. I might go over this with pen. I might grab my microns. I might do him his outline with a little... No, I'm not. You know what I'm going to do? I'm going to do his outline <clears throat> with my fine line of watercolour. Paint. Like my fine line of brush. So, I did that the other day and it worked really well. So, I think I'll do that again today. Because that will be lots of fun. And I'm going to go around the outside of this horse with transparent sienna, I think. I think it was just with my fine line of brush over the pencil marks. And anywhere that is lighter, I'll just leave the white of the paper. So this is a totally different technique to what I usually do, but we're going to give it a go, peeps. So, his ears are brown-ish. So I can come down this part of his face, because that side of his face is a browny colour. Alright, come down here. So I'm basically just going painting over where I've added the pencil. And I might do him all with this fine brush because I can get much more detail in there. And around his nose there. So quite diluted, very watered down. And this is not a large painting so I can get away with it. Doing it with a teeny tiny brush. I think it's a six by f seven by five inch or something. It's a little one, a little painting. All right. So that's just transparent sienna, and I'm going to add a bit of burn umber to that. A bit of burn umber, just to darken up, just a touch around the bottom here. Like that. 
darken up under there. I can darken up in that nostril and that nostril and in his ears are darker. So I can just block those in like that now. Okay. Come around the edge and the top. And the white of the horse is the white of the paper. So I might give him a, a blue sky kind of background as well, but I haven't decided yet. We shall see how the mop flops. So I'm just going to wet that little bit there. I've got to get a bit of cloth in my hand. Get a little bit of cloth. And blend this. Take that excess moisture up. Like that. Suck it up through the cloth. Okay. Now I'm going to go on to the neck. Now the top of his neck is white. So I'm going to go back to my transparency and at the bottom is this brown. So I'm going to fill in around all of this marking. Is what's called a pinto or a paint horse? Is a paint horse. So, because they look like they've been splattered with paint. That's why they're called a paint. And I had one that was really beautifully coloured like this many years ago and his name was Dylan. And he was a beautiful horse. Super talented too, very clever horse. Quarter horse, very smart horse. Quarter horses of renown for being super intelligent, like a working dog, super smart animals. Okay, so I'm actually going to fill in, I'm going to get a slightly bigger brush, slightly bigger, well not slightly, a lot bigger, <laughs> and fill in that spot, that brown spot, like that. I'm just going to literally do, do a wash. Wet brush, dry paper, pop that in there, take it all the way around. Fill in everywhere that's dark, like that, just like that. Cool. And I'm going to do the same with this. I might use this bigger brush for this. It doesn't matter if I go over any of the little um, lines. It does not matter at all as long as it's not the outline and change the shape of his body can change the shape of his patches, not the end of the world. As long as I don't change the shape of his body, I'm a happy camper. All right, come down and around here. Fill in this back part. Now his tail's brown as well, or this golden brown color. So I'll fill that in. That other back leg is white. But his tail is this beautiful golden brown. So fill that in. Should have done the background first, shouldn't I? But oh well. All right. Happy with that. Now, start to add some slightly darker tones. So I've added a little bit of burnt umber to my light brown. And now under here is all in shadow. So I've got that a bit more goldy. So I'm going to darken up under here. I'll blend that out a little bit. <clears throat> blend that out like that. Take it down here. Get along his chest like that. All right, I'm just going to blend this out a little bit. Blend this out a little bit, like that. All right, and then under here is all dark. It's all in shadow, so I can go darker tone down here. So I'll do this in a few layers, in three or four layers probably. So blend that down and out and around. Alright, and on his legs and that I can use a blue and build it up slowly. Alright, I'm going to go an even stronger dark. <clears throat> so I'm going to add, I'm going to make a purpley colour. I'm going to go indigo, I'm going to add indigo to a bit of my brown and a bit of red. Add a bit of red, see what happens. 
makes a purpley sort of brown, purpley grey. Okay, we're going to use that in the darkest areas, this purpley grey. And because it's got a little bit of brown in it, it will actually help unify it. If you use the same colours throughout your palette, um, it does unify your work. If you don't go jumping from super bright yellows to super bright purples to super bright everything, so <laughs> they're just, yeah, that can create confusion in a piece. So you try and use the same palette and mix the same colours together to make the colours you need, it will be unified. And it won't look all jimpy jumpy and all over the place. So I'm just going to blend this out a little bit because I don't want a hard line there. So I'm just going to damp, clean my brush, damp it off, run it around that edge like that, just to soften that edge. <clears throat> Come around here again. I apologise for my asthma -y sound. I've got quite bad asthma today because the weather's been bizarre here and we've had wind and hot and all kinds of stuff. So it plays havoc with asthma. Okay. So now I'm going to come down the shadow areas on these legs with this purpley grey tone. You can see when it's on the paper on it's on the white paper, it is quite purpley. Okay, and I'm going to take this shadow down the front here as well. Come down the front. And I'm going to do the shadow on the back of his bump, rumpy bump. And fill that in. So now I'm going to take it down the back of his leg, like that. He's starting to look good. He's starting to look good. I'll fill in, put the grey on his muzzle. He's got a bit of dark grey on that side. And now I'm going to pop some shadow just under his mane, just a little bit. Teeny tiny, teeny touch under his mane. Like that. And I can drag that down a little bit. So you'll barely even notice it, but it just changes the colour of the paper, that tiny little fraction, <clears throat> which is what I want it to do. Now I'm going to go with a slightly, slightly stronger mix of that purpley shadow colour. Down under the back of that leg. Like that. Back of that hoof. And his hoof's a tanny colour. So I'm only, you can see I'm only shadowing the back of the leg because that's literally the only part I can see the shadow. You can see more shadow on the knee of this one because the other leg's shading it. So there is more shadow on this leg. So I pop that in. Get a bit more shadow on the front of that leg. Like that. There we go, and now I'm going to work on the shadow on the back leg, and I've got to get a stronger shadow at the back. Stronger shadow at the back, like that. Grab some indigo and a bit of brown, because I'm going to make some more of that grey. So that's indigo and burnt umber to make that purpley grey and a bit of red and red. So add a fair bit of red to it just to shadow up that colour, make it a bit more purpley and get it a bit darker. So now I'm starting to build the tones, build the different strengths of shadow like that. Get my brush, drag that out a little bit. Because I've always been quite a loose watercolorist and I'm trying now with my animals to get more detail. I want more detail. I want them to look more drawing like um, just I want to be able to get more detail with watercolor more like an acrylic. I'm going to treat it a bit more like I draw because I do a lot more detail when I do drawings, pure drawings. And I really want my watercolors to be like that now because I love detailed drawings like scientific drawings so I'm going to try <clears throat> and get my work to be a bit more like that. So this is a great practice. I'm going to darken up this part of his belly and into his flank. I don't want to darken up everything. I've got to 
pick and choose where I want the darkest darks. So I'm just going to pick and choose, do his darkest dark. And this is basically the same colour as that, just a stronger tone. Just less water, stronger pigment. Blend that out. Whoops. Like that. I've got to get more into that chest part because you can't. I need it to get really dark in there. I might even go pure indigo in there because why not? Just in there. I just need that to be super dark to show the chest line a bit more. And come down under his chin. That you can see, I'm just adding deep, deep, deep shadows in selected areas, not all over. I don't want hard lines, his ears are very dark, so I can pop those in with that dark shadow. Having a quick look at my screen, pop his pupil in. And these guys do have quite a bit of white in their eye, so I've got to be careful to leave a little bit white there because I have had these coloured horses in the past they're magnificent looking animals really unusual so now I'm going to drag that with a bit of moisture on my brush just to create <clears throat> um, a shadow under his eye like that I've got to get the shadow behind his ear that. Anywhere I can see shadow, I can add that in. And now around his muzzle, around here, is that grey. So I'm going to add that grey now, like that, onto there. Okay, I'm happy with that. I'm going to really darken up down here, back of this leg onto his paston, that's called a paston. It helps to know the anatomy of the animal you're drawing and I have studied horses for so long. I've owned them, ridden them, trained them, always have loved horses. So I've studied them and had to do certificates, like not veterinary or anything, but pony club certificates where you had to know all the parts. You had to name them all and all that fun stuff. So I've been there, done that, so I know the anatomy of horses very, very well. <laughs> They're quite quite easy for me to, to draw and paint. So now I'm going to make up with, I'm not going to add the purple this time. I'm just going to go burnt umber and indigo. Take that down and around like that and just start to really darken. Another layer. I can darken down here. And that leg and dark shadows make things recede things disappear into the distance when it gives you that three-dimensional rounded look so you're better off yeah when you we do shadows do proper shadows do them dark like see so you can see I've taken that quite dark <clears throat> Shadow up in there a little bit, right up into that chin groove, like that. Come up into the back of his armpit and darken that up. Now I'm going to grab my brush, spread that out a bit, like that. Uh, let's have a look, get some more of that up into here. Blend it round into his flank area. I might give him a background. I might just put a blue background, a sky blue, like an ultramarine. So I'm just going to grab a very diluted wash of ultramarine and I'm only going to pop it directly around him. I don't want it everywhere. I don't want it thick. I just want to take that around him just to give him a little bit of contrast with the white and I'm not even going to fill in the whole paper. I'm just going to do it, cut around him, 
around his mane, trying not to get it on any of the white, anywhere that it's going to... Oops, I've got to be careful here, pick up that bead. So what I do, took the moisture out of my brush and just pick that up. Then run that around the back. I can use that wet bit there to just travel that around. Change the shape of his rump of fraction, like that. Oops. I can also use blue for the shadows on the horse if I want. So I'm just going to drag that around, around his tail like that. It's helping to make him stand, make the whites brighter. You put your darks against your lights and it makes your lights stand out. And I like to use the white of the paper for my whites of my pieces. So I take that out and around, come down to the bottom. I'm not going to worry about doing grass or anything. I didn't do the foot there, so I'll just, I'll just cut mark where the foot will be. And that foot will be about there, so I'll just mark that and leave that as a shadow. Sort of finished, unfinished. Lost and found, that's what it's called. Lost and found, so I've got lost and found lines. It's not hard, no hard lines. Which makes things look far better, I have to say. Okay. So I just cut around here. Cut around here and just drag that down to the bottom there. And drag it all the way down there. Righto. It's looking better. Looking better. So now I'll take that down around the edge of his nose. So this is just pure cobalt blue, and I'm using uh, Archer's hot press paper. Um, and hot press just means it's smooth. Rough, rough paper, cold press is rough, and hot press is smooth. If you hear watercolour terminology, that's what the difference is. Hot press is smooth, and I like for animals to use smooth. I just prefer it. I, have, I still enjoy hot, the rough paper, but I do prefer smooth for animals and wildlife. And I can use it for drawing as well. I don't have to use that paper for watercolour, where with, hot, with the rough paper... You sort of have to use it for watercolour because pen and that stuff, it's too rough to get the <clears throat> the lines where you want them. And to be more, it's too rough, too hard to be precise, I find, with especially well, with the drawing. Not so much a painting, it's, it's probably nicer to paint with, but it's, because this can be hard to manage with paint. Okay, you can end up with harsh lines and stuff, where the rough paper's a little bit more forgiving for watercolour. Right, I'm going to leave that with the rough background. I'm not even going to finish that background. So, but now I'm going to add the hooves and I'm going to use gold ochre just for the bottom of the hoofs. I've just got to get almost pure pigment. I want very tiny little amount of water. Just a little bit, not a lot. Take that to the hoofs. Hooves. Like that. There we go. And see, that just suggests those hooves without any fuss whatsoever. No fuss whatsoever. So now I'm going to go back into my blues. And I'm going to grab a little bit of cobalt. Very diluted, incredibly diluted, almost water. And I'm going to put that into the shadows around his shoulders and his body. Not everywhere, just a few spots. Don't want it everywhere. I just need to show that he's got shadows on his body, on his white spots. He's got a shadow there. He's got shadow on that part of his white. I just want shadows on his white. Very subtle shadows on his white. Right, I'm happy with that. Go back to my super duper 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 fine brush and grab some burnt umber. I'm going to go almost pure burnt umber. Very little water, and start to add detail on the fur on his tail. Get that going. 
like that. Okay, so I'll take that all the way down, all the way. And I can, now that's dry in the background, I can add a few finessey sort of blowy outy bits on his tail. Like that, because their tails don't all just blow down one direction, they blow in all directions. I've got to go out actually and take some photos of our horses and do some artworks of them, I think. Alright, I'm happy with that. Now I'm going to actually dye, I'm going to use the gold ochre again, just because his mane's his pure white mane, he's a little bit dirty. So I'm just going to add a few strands of dirty sort of grey, browny coloured hair in there. Not solidly, just a few strands of it. I'm going to leave, I can do some shadows on the ground I think, maybe. Mm, do I want to do some shadows on the ground? I don't know. Maybe I do. Maybe I'll do some shadows. Maybe I'll get some blue, some indigo. And I'm just going to add, where would the shadows be? The shadows would be here. And sort of towards the back. And that'll help to ground him on the, in the picture. Just in the sketch, it'll help to ground him. Just using that purple tone. But I won't do it heavily and everywhere. And I'm just using my thin brush. So that just helps to ground him in the picture, so he doesn't look like he's floating on the paper. I'm happy with that. Wet my brush, just drag that down a bit in a few spots just to keep it interesting. Why not? Take it out the back a fraction. There we go. All right, he's looking pretty cool. He's looking pretty cool. I'm now going to use this indigo that I just used in the shadow on the ground. Because I have used indigo in these other colours and I'm going to darken up the darkest darks. Not all of them, not solid lines anywhere. I don't want it to be all around him, I want it in just the darkest bits. So like just back here and into his flank, like that, just like that. And then under his armpit, like that. Under his chin back down onto his cheek, blend that, like that, blend the bottom of his chin, like that, righto, I'm happy with that, I'm also going to do it onto his chest here, like that. Down that side of his chest, down there, alright I'm happy with that, just on this bit here I can darken that bit right up, darken that bit right up, that leg there and under there, get that shape more on that foot. Cool. Alright, we're getting there. And less is more. I don't have to do a whole lot. I mean, that is by far a much more detailed watercolour than I usually do. And that's taken half an hour, start to finish. 36 minutes. I can add some finer detail now around his face using that blue. He's got little veins. He's got a really dark shadow and I'm using the indigo, I'm not using black, I'm using indigo. Take that around here, onto his, under his nose a little bit, like that. Take it up there. Righto. Get some more indigo. So you can use unnatural colours, it just helps to... He's much darker up the top here. I don't want it everywhere. I just want a few strands through, like that. Because it's blowing in the wind, it's lighter at the bottom. All right, cool. Pretty happy with that. 
I could darken up that part of that side of his eye because you could just see that bit. Having another quick look around. All right, clean my brush. I can see where I need to add a little bit more blue, a bit more cobalt up here. here. Bring it back around that part of his rump a little bit. Righto. Pretty happy with that. Alright. There we go. Righto, we are just about done. So I hope you've enjoyed this video. I'd love it if you click like and subscribe. Click on the bell icon. That way you'll be notified when I release a new video. Also, sorry for the background noise. My daughter was playing a computer game in the other room. <laughs> so I could just hear it just subtly in the distance. Anyway, thank you so much for watching. Have an awesome day and I will catch you next time. Okie doke. Bye.